This video outlines in short how to fill in the part 1 section of an initial trial application. Part 1 contains three main subsections. Trial details. Sponsor details. And product details. In the sponsor workspace, in part 1, use the lock button of the trial details subsection to be able to work on the various subsections and click on the arrows to expand the working areas of each subsection. Any field with an asterisk is a mandatory field. The video will focus on those fields only. More information on the content and the structure of the part 1 can be found in the e-learning of this module. In the trial identifiers subsection, you can edit the full trial title and you need to insert a public title. You can add a translation of the titles using the respective buttons on the right side. Select the language from the drop-down list. Type the translated title and click on the confirm button. Below, you can add the protocol code and secondary identifiers for the trial, if they are available. Scroll down, and open the trial information subsection. Select the trial phase from the drop-down menu. And add the medical condition, using the button add condition found on the right side. In the pop-up window, type the condition and indicate whether it is considered a rare disease or not, using the tick box on the left side. You can also add translation. Click on the confirm button. Scroll down, and insert the therapeutic area, using the drop down list. Below, insert the trial scope, using the drop down menu. You may insert multiple values. In this example, safety, efficacy and therapy are selected. Below, type the main objective in its respective field. Scroll down, and click on the Add Inclusion Criteria button. In the pop-up window, type the inclusion criterion on the available field. Click on the Confirm button. You may add more than one value in this subsection. Follow the same procedure to insert the appropriate exclusion criteria and primary endpoints. Scroll down, and in the trial duration area, use the calendars and insert the estimated recruitment start date and the end of trial date. Below, in the subsection of the population of trial subjects, insert the age range from the drop down list. Additional information in terms of gender and whether the subjects of the trial belong to vulnerable population or not can be provided. Below, open the next subsection, the clinical trial protocol, and click on the Add Document button, found in the protocol area. Either drag and drop the document on the grey area or click on the grey area to browse your files and select the document. Click on the Attach button. The remaining fields of this subsection are not mandatory. Scroll down to view the sponsors subsection. Click on the lock button to expand the area. The subsection includes the sponsor information, introduced at the time of the creation of the initial application, and additional information on the contact details required by the regulation. Click on the button Add Contact Point for Union. Below, an area dedicated to the contact point for European Union appears. Scroll down to find the contact details and fill in the mandatory fields. Back to the sponsor organization details. Click on the line that contains the sponsor, and the button Add Contacts will appear on the right side. Click on it and additional contact points appear in the pop-up list. Click on the legal representative from the list. In the pop-up window, you need to select the organization of the legal representative. Search for the organization, using the search functionality. Select the organization from the results. And click on the button Add Legal Representative. A new area dedicated to the legal representative appears. 
fill in the mandatory contact details fields. Note that this is only necessary to complete, in case the sponsor of the trial is not based in the European Union. In that case, a legal representative based in the European Union needs to be appointed. You still need to add the scientific contact point and the public contact point. From the Add Contacts button, click on the scientific contact point. You will be asked to associate it with a sponsor. Click on the line of the sponsor that you wish to add the contact points for, and then, click on the Select button. Below, the area dedicated to the scientific contact point expands. Fill in the mandatory contact details fields. Tick in the box below if the sponsor scientific contact point is the same with the public contact point. If they are not the same, you need to repeat the procedure, but selecting this time the public contact point from the Add Contacts button. Last, you can add the third party, in case tasks, or functions on the trial, have been delegated to third parties. In the pop-up window, as you did previously with a legal representative, use the search functionality to find the organization. Select it from the results, and click on the Add Third Party button. Scroll down, to find the area dedicated to the third party. And click on the pencil icon to add the duties and contact details. Fill in the required fields, and click on the Confirm button. You can remove any of the contact points by using the Remove button, or the bin icon in the case of the third party. After you insert the sponsor details, scroll down. And click on the Lock button of the product subsection to expand its working area. If you click on the Register button, you will be redirected to the Extended Eudrovigilance Medicinal Product Dictionary page, where you can register new products or substances. Click on the Add button to retrieve product details that are already registered in the Eudrovigilance database. Select the role of the product. In this example, a test product will be selected for inclusion in the application. It is mandatory to have at least one test product in the application. A drop-down for the test card appears. Click on the arrow. And then, click on the Add button below. In this example, an authorized substance is selected. In the pop-up form, insert a value in the mandatory field name. Use the other fields, or the drop-down list on the upper right corner, to better define your criteria, and to narrow down your results, and click on the Search Substances button. Select the substance from the results. And in the end of the window, click on the Add Substance button. Click on the arrow with the added test role and substance, to expand the working area again, as you need to populate additional details. Click on the selected substance, to reveal subsections that need to be populated. Structured data fields for the product will need to be completed. Expand the product characteristics subsection. And from the drop-down list, select one or more values. Open the dosage and administration details subsection. Fill in the mandatory fields, indicated with asterisks. Open the subsection below. To indicate whether the selected medicinal product has been modified in relation to its marketing authorization. Open the Orphan Designation subsection to report whether the selected medicinal product has an orphan drug designation. Scroll down in the following subsections where you need to upload documents. Expand the investigator brochure for the medicinal product and upload the investigator brochure document or the summary of product characteristics document. At least one of the two documents should be provided. More documents need to be uploaded in the rest subsections. Scroll down to the last subsection of part 1, where all the uploaded documents are listed. This video is part of the CTIS training program. For more information on the structure and content of part 1 section of a clinical trial application, you may visit our training platform and our additional materials.